be addressing how to determine cost for services, pricing for working with future clients, or determining the value of the dress you hope to sell. This is very much determined by the current market and what part of the world you're in. And so it's not an easy question to, to price. So what I'll tell you, so rather than give you exact prices, I will tell you what I've done that has not worked and what I would change if I could. Let's start with the value of the dress you hope to sell. That really is kind of tricky. You can go um, and look on eBay and sort of price things there. There's a whole bunch of kind of not great stuff for around the $500 price range, or at least in the US. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that equates to for you, Lisa. Um, but there's a whole bunch of low-end dresses and then there's people who are trying to sell high quality costumes that are two thousand dollars a piece and stop share there we go and so it's pricing from what's on ebay is tough because you really it's it's such a wide market when i tried to sell something on ebay i was list they, they were older dresses i think i sold the latin dress for maybe 550 and then the or the sold the ball gown but then the latin dress was returned somebody bought it and then returned it the other option you can do for pricing your dress is to check um, there's quite a, a number of consignment places around the world and do a Google search for consignment. And I can actually post this for you all because I sent out a, a mass email just to my own Seam Sensational dress list for people wanting to sell their dresses. And so I can forward that information to you guys. It was all in the US. I have a hard time coming up with stuff in Australia because Google keeps giving me US even when I type in cons Australia afterwards. So I think unfortunately for other countries, you're gonna have to just do your own search um, but that way you can get an idea of what dresses are pricing for and you can maybe sell your dress through these websites. Um, the other option for pricing your dress to sell is always price it high because you can come down. And um, then you can also base it on supply and demand. So if you are trying to sell a dress made for, um, let's say, a little at the risk of sounding rude, a little skinny mini that can wear anything, or like a teenage girl that can wear any kind of costume. She has a lot of options, a lot of options, because if you've got the physique where you can wear pretty much any shape dress, there's a bazillion of those out there. So you're not going to get much for your, for your dress. However, if you are making a dress for a medium to plus size lady, you can jack up the price of the dress as it goes up because there aren't very many out there. Does that make sense? So you can, you got, you got to use your judgment. <sighs> Sorry, I can't just say charge this much. For instance, the fabric that's sitting back there on that table, <laughs> I'm, I'm really actually making a ball gown out of it for a local client and she had just sold the ball gown that I had made her like six or oh no it's ten years ago now and so she called me up and she says all right well one of my students wants to buy my dress how much do you think I should ask her for it so I gave her this figure of I don't know like I said if you really want to get rid of it drop it down to a thousand otherwise you can maybe get sixteen or eighteen hundred because it's an older dress and the older the dresses get the rhinestones fall off. The glue stays on the dress, but the stones deteriorate, and there's nothing to be done about that. It's just an age issue. It's kind of like the rest of us falling apart. And so she says, okay. And then she called me back two or three days later, and she got 2100 for it. <laughs> I'm like, good for you. So always start high, because if they seem shocked, or if they balk at it then you could say you know what how about you make two payments you know and then let them spread it out over two or three payments and if you don't know the person well enough to feel comfortable with that then go ahead and um drop the price a couple hundred dollars because it's worth it to you to get rid of it because if you don't sell it when you have a potential buyer you could be sitting on the address for two more years <laughs> and, and that's not an exaggeration um i remember i had 
uh, one of my colleagues when I was still competing professionally, anytime somebody came up and said, oh, I love your dress, she says, thanks, it's for sale. And she was completely serious. She would have sold it off her back. She would have said, let me go up to the room and change clothes and it's yours. Because always sell it when you have an opportunity. I mean, hands down. How to determine cost for services or pricing for working with future clients? Also an extra question, or good question. Um, a lot of this has to do with self-confidence. And I think we all struggle with this in some area of our life. And what I have discovered for myself is that for some reason, I am not good at charging a high enough dollar value for the quality of dress that I make. And you can go on the website and look, it's, it's done that my, my prices for dresses are on there. Given that in the United States, people are selling Doré, I'll use, I'll just use the name. She's one of my clients sent me a photo and said, I really love this dress, but it's $7,000. I nearly choked. And I'm like, $7,000 for an off the rack dress, not custom made for anybody. Therefore, it took half the amount of time. And I'm charging a maximum of, say, thirty-five or $3,800 for something custom made that I put 60 to 80 hours into. There's something way wrong with this picture. So the first thing I would tell you is know what's in your current market. And you'll, you'll have to put some time and research into that. And a lot of people don't want to tell you their prices. It may or may not be on their website. You could possibly order a sketch package from them and they'll send you usually really crappy sketches. They do poor quality sketches. And, um, but, it, but it'll have a price on it somewhere and then you, you can find out kind of what's in your area. There are usually several tiers of cost. So there's usually beginning costuming, which you know might be in the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range this is typically people who are have equal or less experience than what you all have with zero training it's somebody that maybe made bridal gowns and decided oh I'm gonna learn how to make I'm gonna make a skate costume well the skate costume is gonna suck because they don't know how to do it because they make bridal gowns but they're gonna charge you only a thousand bucks so there's that tier of people do not do that because you all have I know from your questions, you all have more experience than that, even before you took the course. And then after you took the course, that bump puts you up into sort of this mid price range, which might be somewhere between $1,500 and $2,500 a dress. Or maybe, and then as you, after you've done that for a year or two, then you bump your prices up and go up to somewhere around 3,000. And Lisa, I apologize, I don't know what your rates in Australia are. I know that these are expensive sports global wide. If you've got several dresses to sell, just get one of those little square reader cards where you can swipe credit cards. I believe that's a global thing and it's in Australia also. They're free to get. It's like 3% that you would lose off the cost of the sale, but in a way it's the cost of doing business. And that way, if it's somebody over um, that, you know, is on the other side of the country that you are not, that you don't see face to face where they can say, here's, here's a check. You can just type in a credit card or swipe their credit card. And, you know, yeah, you'll be out 50 bucks or 70 bucks, but just think of you got the thousand or 2000 in your bank account. So that's a good thing. Anybody can get it. You do not have to be a merchant. Mm -hmm.